In this video, I want to look briefly at two articles, both from the British Medical Journal. The first is a BMJ editorial titled Vaccinating Children Against SARS-CoV-2. It was published on the 13th of May this year. In the introduction, they write, Young people have been largely spared from severe COVID-19 so far, and the value of childhood vaccination against respiratory viruses in general remains an open question for three reasons. The first reason, they state, is the limited benefits of protection in age groups that experience only mild disease. The second reason is the limited effects that the vaccine has on transmission. And the third reason, the possibility of unintended consequences of vaccine rollout. They then look at each of these in turn, protection, transmission and unintended consequences. So the first, protection. They write, preliminary data suggests that disease caused by variants of concern remains mild in young children. We have over 18 months of data now, indicating clearly that children are at an incredibly low risk of suffering severe illness from SARS-CoV-2. Offering children protection from COVID is therefore not a medically justifiable reason for mass rollout of the vaccination amongst this cohort. On the subject of transmission, they write, children seem to be less susceptible than adults to both infection and transmission of SARS-CoV-2 and countries such as Norway maintained low transmission rates despite keeping primary schools open. Numerous international studies have shown that the schools that remained open did not result in an increase of cases. Cases increased and decreased, consistent with community spread, but study after study conclude that schools were not the drivers of that. This suggests a limited role for young children in sustaining chains of transmission and that vaccinating children is likely to be of marginal benefit in reducing the risk to others. Regarding unintended consequences of COVID-19 vaccines, the authors foresee a potential problem in how it could impact population immunity. They warn, vaccinating children might increase the frequency of large seasonal epidemics, leading to overall increases in virus-induced morbidity and mortality this seems counterintuitive. This BMJ editorial makes the case that vaccinating children might actually increase COVID-19 deaths in the long run. One reason for this is the duration of immunity induced by vaccines. It is well accepted now that the COVID vaccine effectiveness wanes, unlike natural immunity, which is long lasting. Mass vaccination of children may be opting for short-lived vaccine induced immunity over durable natural immunity and therefore might actually increase the frequency of large seasonal epidemics in the long run. The second reason for this unintended consequence is the rate of viral antigenic change. The vaccine targets specific antigens of SARS-CoV-2. However, as the virus replicates, frequent small changes occur to these antigens, resulting in mutations. This can be problematic for narrow and targeted vaccine-induced immunity compared to the broad and complete immunity acquired by natural infection. Mass vaccination of children may be opting for narrow vaccine-induced immunity over broad natural immunity and is therefore another reason why it might actually increase the frequency of large seasonal epidemics in the long run. It goes on to state, once most adults are vaccinated, circulation of SARS-CoV-2 may in fact be desirable as it is likely to lead to primary infection early in life when disease is mild, followed by booster re-exposures throughout adulthood as transmission blocking immunity wanes but disease blocking immunity remains high. This would keep reinfections mild and immunity up to date. So not only do they argue that COVID-19 vaccination in healthy children is unnecessary, they actually argue that it is undesirable for the population as a whole longer term with it potentially increasing the risk of COVID-19 morbidity and mortality for the vulnerable in the long run. On the other hand, to allow healthy children to acquire infection naturally and harmlessly when symptoms are overwhelmingly mild or non-existent, this will build a protective wall of natural immunity which is broad, robust and durable. The other article I wish to look at today is titled COVID-19 Vaccines for Children Hypothetical benefits to adults do not outweigh risks to children. This was published in the British Medical Journal as an opinion piece on the 13th of July this year. It is co-authored by Peter Doshi, 
who is an associate editor at the BMJ. He is highly respected in circles of academic medicine, science and pharmacology. It sets the scene by looking at what risk COVID-19 poses to children. Disease in children is commonly mild and serious sequelae remain rare. Healthy children are not at risk of severe disease or death from COVID-19. Anyone who is not aware of that has not been paying attention to the data over the past 18 months. Indeed, COVID-19 is generally asymptomatic or mild in children. They go on, even if one assumes protection against severe COVID-19, given its very low incidence in children, an extremely high number would need to be vaccinated in order to prevent one severe case. Meanwhile, a large number of children with very low risk for severe disease would be exposed to vaccine risks, known and unknown. The vaccine risks are becoming evident as the global rollout occurs. Serious conditions such as myocarditis are establishing themselves as known risks. Added to that are the unknown risks, which may not present in the short or mid-term. The authors acknowledge that the longer-term adverse effects of messenger RNA vaccines are unknown. They write, The long-term effects of gene-based vaccines, which involve novel vaccine platforms, remain essentially unknown. Traditional vaccines put a weakened or inactivated germ into the body to trigger an immune response, but the mRNA vaccines do not work in the same way. Instead, they deliver a genetic code into the cell, instructing them to produce the spike protein. It is a novel technology, and there is simply no long-term safety data on it. But is the risk worth doing for the greater good? The authors write, The assertion that vaccinating children against SARS-CoV-2 will protect adults remains hypothetical. Even if we were to assume this protection does exist, the number of children that would need to be vaccinated to protect just one adult from a bout of severe COVID-19 would be extraordinarily high. Moreover, this number would likely compare unfavourably to the number of children that would be harmed, including for rare serious events. Vaccinating children will not result in the protection of adults. The editorial I looked at prior to this argued that vaccinating children may in fact decrease population protection in the long run. But even if it were to offer protection to adults, the vaccine adverse effects to children would offset any benefits. Any benefits would likely compare unfavourably to the number of children that would be harmed from the vaccine. They conclude, There is no need to rush to vaccinate children against COVID-19. The vast majority stands little to benefit, and it is ethically dubious to pursue a hypothetical protection of adults while exposing children to harms, known and unknown. There is no ambiguity in these articles, one a BMJ editorial, the other co-authored by an associate BMJ editor. Therefore, this literature has the full backing from the British Medical Journal, one of the most prestigious medical journals internationally. This literature should be essential reading for any parent of a child in secondary school. The overall message is that mass rollout of the COVID vaccine to healthy children is a medical intervention that is wholly unjustified. If I could end on the sentence that stands out most for me, and the one sentence that I find deeply, deeply concerning is this. The long-term effects of gene-based vaccines remain essentially unknown.